What's up, DS3 TV? We are back for another video. Let me just put this back into. Okay, no. <laughs> but uh, yeah, what is up, DS3 TV? We are back for another video. This is Top 10 Facts uh, About Space, Part 1. So yeah, this is also recommended to me by a subscriber. So yeah, this is going to be good. I love looking at space facts because they actually are kind of fun to look at. So yeah, let's do that. And also, I need to get my headphones because how am I going to do this without headphones? I don't know. <laughs> you guys will hear like a major, a major echo if I did it, if I did it like that. And probably would not hear the video as good. But, yeah. So, let's get into it. Also, subscribe to the channel. Want to get down subscribers by Valentine's Day. Thank you guys for giving me up to 96 subscribers at this point. It's only been like a month and a half or maybe even a little bit less that I put out that the channel has came out. I am extremely thankful for all of you. And, uh, yeah, let's make the fan base grow bigger. So, yeah, let's do that. And play. If two pieces of metal touch in space, they will melt together and become one. It's something called cold welding or cold fusion. I've heard of cold fusion. I have heard of that. Contact welding. This doesn't happen on... No, it, oh, so it's cold welding. Okay, I didn't know this. I thought it was cold fusion. Did not know that. Earth because the atmosphere puts a layer of oxidized material between the surfaces which makes the wielding process impossible. This might seem like it would be a big problem for satellites, space stations and the like, but because the metals come from Earth, they're already coated with the material. In fact, the only evidence this process actually takes place have come from controlled experiments deliberately designed to provoke it. Most of us think we know the planets of our solar system. We have Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. We also have Pluto, but... People don't like to say Pluto is a planet. I feel like that Pluto kind of should be a planet. Why'd you have to take Pluto's planethood away from him? Him or her, because, you know, don't really know, but yeah. Um, don't know why you had to take its planethood away from it. That's my take on it. Sadly, as of 2006, it's no longer classified as a planet. Instead, it's now a member of the new dwarf planet category. But, what if I told you that Pluto is not the only dwarf planet? For example, there's Ceres, Eris, Makemake, Haumea, Sedna, Orcus, Kwawar, Exion, oh, wow. Verona, chaos and many more which has not been given any official names yet. Ceres is especially interesting as it's orbiting the sun between Mars and Jupiter. Hmm, yeah. When you mention black holes, the first thing people often imagine is something like this. An almost two-dimensional disc-shaped object that pulls everything in on one side with nothing appearing on We seen the video we I mean I, I'm thinking everybody's seen the picture. Um he might show it next time, so I'm not gonna like put the picture in, but yes, yeah, there they like they took a picture of like a true black hole, which is pretty cool. On the other, this is of course all thanks to the interpretations of black holes by popular sci-fi movies and TV shows. In reality, a black hole is not much unlike a star or planet in the sense that it's actually a sphere with an immense gravitational field that pulls everything in from all directions. The sun, you, you know that thing that's keeping you alive and shit, is actually not <laughs> yellow. It only appears yellow because of the Earth's atmosphere. In reality, the sun outputs all colors in the visible spectrum at almost an equal intensity, which means the true color of the sun is actually white. The tagline, in space, no one can hear. So it's, because it's basically a star, it's, it's a star like how, you know, the other stars are in space. So, yeah, I can see how it would be basically white. Hear you scream from the movie Aliens from 1979 is entirely true as sound waves cannot travel in a vacuum. Sound waves, unlike radio waves, for example, needs particles to travel through. 
But if you, you ever find yourself in space with a spacesuit, with a friend in another spacesuit, and you realize <laughs> that your radios isn't working, I mean, we're, we're all going to end up in that situation at some point. There's another way to communicate by bumping our helmets against one another. When the helmets oh. touch, they act as a bridge for the sound waves to travel through, and so you'd be able to talk naturally without using any radios or anything else. And by naturally, I mean screaming like you've gone insane. Huh, okay. Stars can be freaking weird. For example, there's a star out there with the memorable name of WISE 1828-2650. But it's not the name which is interesting, rather how cold it is. It's what's called a brown dwarf star and it's the coldest star ever found with a temperature range of minus 23 to 127 degrees Celsius. Yeah, a star that can be colder than you are. Another weird star is BPM 37093. Gotta love these names. Right. But the star's core <laughs> is made of diamond. 10 billion trillion trillion carats of diamond. I think we, I think I might have heard about that a long time ago. To be precise. And neutron stars is even weirder. Neutron stars are so dense that a single teaspoon of its material would weigh over 100 million tons. Oh, wow. Alien life is bound to exist somewhere in the universe, but so far there's no evidence of that. At least not that the public know of anyway. However, what we do know is that there are planets out there that has the possibility to sustain life. So-called habitable exoplanets. Yeah. So far we've found around 50 such planets, with some being as close as only 20 light years away. But as of yet, we have no way of confirming if these planets... That would, that would take a very long time to get there actually do support life, only that they have the unique attributes to possibly do so. In April 2010, radio astronomers reported an unknown object in the galaxy M82. The object had, seemingly out of nowhere, started sending out strange radio waves, which did not look like anything seen anywhere in the universe before. There have been several theories about the nature of this unknown object, but currently no theory entirely fits the observed data. Did you know that our own galaxy, the Milky Way, is right now colliding with another, much smaller galaxy? Well, well it is. The galaxy is known as Sagittarius Dwarf Elliptical Galaxy and is currently about 70,000 light years away from Earth. But no worries, it's very unlikely that a star or a planet will crash into one another as they're separated by many light years of empty space. The same thing will happen in a few billion years from now when the Andromeda galaxy will collide with our own and will create a much larger Milky Andromeda galaxy. <laughs> UY Scotty is so far the largest star found. If it was placed in the center of our solar system, it would engulf every planet all the way out to Jupiter. IC1101 is one of the largest known galaxies in the universe. It holds around 100 trillion stars. To put that in perspective, our own galaxy, the Milky Way, only contains a measly 400 billion stars. But the absolute largest and most massive object in the observable universe was discovered in November of 2013. It's called the Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall. The structure is a so-called galactic filament, or in other words, a U- So I tempted to make a Corona joke right there, but I'm not going to. Just make sure you wear your mask though group of galaxies assembled by gravity. The structure is so huge that scientists can't even explain its existence. It's 10 billion light years away, which means that we see the structure as it was 10 billion years ago, and the universe is only about 13.7 billion years old. That means the structure had a little more than 3 billion years to form, which scientists say is just not possible. For comparison, our own solar system took a around 4.6 billion years to form. The structure is basically too large to exist. Hmm. <laughs> Alright.
right, so that was good. That was good. I wouldn't mind watching another part of that. But um, yeah, so that was the video. Uh, subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this. And also, um, put in the comment section what videos you want me to react to. Because I let, you know, you guys um, choose what I, what I watch at this point. So yeah, please do that. And talk to you guys in the next video. Also subscribe to the channel. Want to get down subscribers by Valentine's Day. Um, and talk to you guys in the next video and peace.